Let's explode Tennyson's Charge of the Light Brigade. Tennyson wrote this poem as a tribute to the brave soldiers who rode to their deaths during the Crimean War at the famous Battle of Balaclava in 1854. He writes the poem in third person, so we observe the situation without being able to intervene, conveying how helpless these soldiers are to stop following these miscommunicated and ill-advised orders. It kind of gives this poem an epic feeling, a tale, a story of grave importance. The first three verses reflect on the charge of the men, the fourth on the battle, and the fifth shifts its focus on the aftermath moving forward in time. The final stanza is where Tennyson reflects on the impact and cost of the actions that have been undertaken. There is a sense of distance and respect as we look at the glorification of their sacrifice. Its regular rhythm replicates the charge of the horses. It also emphasises the speed in which these soldiers were travelling and the impact that would have had upon them once hit by the cannon fire. Rhyming couplets and triples run throughout this poem, although there's also places where the rhyme is lost completely, referring to the fallen soldiers or the futile nature of this whole attack. I think this mimics the general curse of the whole event, how something you perceive as being a dead cert turns out to be a slaughtering massacre. The repetition of Road the 600 gives an inevitability about their deaths. The final honour the is given to remind the reader what they must do now, and that is hold these men in high regard. By referencing Psalm 23 of the Bible through the metaphorical valley of death, he creates a solemn, almost religious tone. Furthermore, his strong verbs, volleyed, thundered, stormed, conveys the sounds and actions of the battle. By personifying the valley as the jaws of death and the mouth of hell, it's clear that Tennyson feel these men are consumed. Yet charged and plunged into battery smoke means that Tennyson's keen to remind us that these men were brave and rigorous in what they did. And the battle is relayed to the reader to give us a real true sense of watching, but yet not being able to interfere. A bit like how we think we can watch but not interfere with many things in life potentially. Tennyson clearly wishes for us to see this sacrifice as a noble one. As the rhetorical question, when can their glory fade, reminds us that throughout generations, past and to come, men have always sacrificed themselves for the greater good. Well, the greater good they're told to sacrifice themselves for anyway. Want to know more about AQA or Edexcel, OCR poetry? Follow for more.